Love and Light. This is Healthy Talk Show, recording live on Monday, January 6, 2020. I'm Robert. And I'm Marissa. Show notes will be over at healthytalkshow.com forward slash 47. On this episode of Healthy Talk Show, we examine a new California water law and Maxine Waters gets pranked by Russian trolls. But first... And Amazon has threatened to fire workers who speak out about the online retail giant's environmental policies. Leaders of the group Amazon Employees for Climate Justice say they've received <laughs> letters reprimanding them. You like that name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to be secretive about it. <laughs> <They're> just... <laughs> yeah, busted for speaking to the media without their permission of Amazon's corporate offices. Last September, thousands of Amazon workers joined a youth-led... I like that shirt, Amazon Hustler. I bet you that's an Amazon-provided shirt. Probably. That, that is so cool. Yeah. That is really neat. Global strike for the climate, with some of them speaking out publicly on social media. I'm walking out. I'm walking out. I'm walking out. To show solidarity with the youth leaders who have started the Fridays for the Future movement. Because global warming is the biggest issue we're facing today. Because global climate change affects everybody, but it is going to affect the most vulnerable of society first. Because it's important that I show my son a model for what it looks like to fight for justice. Because it's the right thing to do. Because Amazon does not demonstrate the same leadership on climate change that I'm expected to demonstrate every day on the job. Ooh, Amazon. That is, it's funny. <laughs> it, it's funny. I, I'm curious, do their terms of employment, do they have to sign some sort of NDA or, because why is Amazon getting all upset that they're... T- yeah, that's true. Well, <laughs> you probably do. You can't, Amazon's actually very secretive about their facilities. It's mm. not just something you walk into. Yeah. They're very, they're very locked down. It's not, you know, obviously we don't, a lot of people don't know what's going on in there. It's, this is funny. I'm yeah. surprised that they would uh, push back at their employees too. Yeah. Pretty bad move. We'll, yeah. see, we'll see what happens. Hopefully Kinda. they actually don't fire them because that would be a yeah. bad press for Amazon. KXAN police confirmed the suspect in a deadly stabbing attack in Austin was homeless. People realize that there's not a link between homelessness and criminality. That's like suggesting that all all immigrants are, are rapists. It, it is just not true, and it is harmful. This is Mayor Adler's history. response to Governor Abbott's tweets. We talked to him while he's in a New York hospital waiting for his daughter to give birth. He felt it necessary to respond to the governor's attacks on Austin policies towards homeless people. Real necessary. Did in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, you want to go back and read uh, the tweet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was saying for our audio listeners. Absolutely. The tweet from Greg Abbott, Texas governor. You are exactly right. I'm not attacking homelessness. I'm criticizing the lawlessness, the lawlessness promoted by the city of Austin. The city's top job is public safety and they are failing. Yesterday's tragic murder is the most recent example. This was in response to some violent attack. Oh, yeah. Yep, we got the, it's in the report. Oh, cool. We talked to him while he's in a New York mm-hmm. hospital waiting for his daughter to give birth. He felt it necessary to respond to the governor's attacks on Austin policies towards homeless people. This comes after a 27-year-old man attacked three people at a South Congress shopping center, <clears throat> killing one. Shortly after, Governor Abbott suggested that the suspect would likely be a homeless person. His other uh, tweet? When all the facts are revealed, I bet you'll learn the killer was a homeless man with prior arrest. If so, Austin's reckless homeless policy puts lives in danger to murder like to murders like this. Austin leaders must answer for their perilous policies. There's a battle going on between the governor of (laughs) Texas and the mayor of the city of Austin within Texas. This is great watching this unfold. Mayor Adler called that suggestion irresponsible. And today, APD confirmed the suspected killer is homeless. Oh, today, Uh-oh. Governor Abbott had a series of tweets suggesting that the city must ensure its homeless policies doesn't endanger innocent people. The Mayor Adler's response... Most of the crimes uh, in this city are not committed by people experiencing homelessness. Uh, so- but that's just, you can't use that logic. Yeah. I don't like that logic. That's not... Well. We've reported how in California, crimes are escalating with the homeless. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> what, what can you say? And then, uh, you have more on this report? Yep. Oh, yeah. So, to demonize people that way, to make us scared of people. 
does a real disservice to the community. Mayor Adler says instead of a Twitter feud, he'd like to speak to the governor face to face. I want the state to be our partner. Uh, to be working with us. Mayor Adler wants the state to offer more resources to get homeless people into housing. However, he says if needed, the city will try to do the best it can on its own. So the city wants more money from the state? Mm, wait, mm. I, didn't San Francisco and <laughs> Seattle and they've also asked for more Everyone's money? Everyone's always asking for more money. Yeah. That's the problem. Just more money. We need it. More money. Uh, Remind me, did Austin decriminalize like petty crimes or does that not oh, happen there pretty sure they've done it there in yeah. most cities it's been petty crimes have been pretty much decriminalized and yeah. it's anything under a thousand dollars not prosecuted on anymore which kind of a problem yeah this guy actually the stabbing the guy who committed the stabbing actually jumped off the roof and landed on his head oh my god and witnesses said they could hear the crack of his it oh. was bad yeah this guy yeah when the police try to apprehend him, I guess, on the roof of whatever, the, either the pizza or the whatever, oh they, whatever it was. There were two places. He went, he just went on a stabbing rage. Three people. <laughs> well, then that tells me that this guy was probably mentally ill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. It's, <laughs> now that goes back to. We close, and homeless. Yeah. Apparently. He's mentally, so mentally ill, Ill and homeless. homeless. Okay. Well, that's what we've been well, saying about homeless. Yeah. And we're saying that there aren't mental health facilities for these them. people. No. So. And. This is what happens. Yeah. There's no is, support. There's no support. There's no help for them. There's no community. NBC News, Stockton Pilots, Small Scale Universal Basic Income Program. In California's Central Valley, Stockton has seen its share of financial problems, but is now bouncing back. The city's embracing a radical new plan that could transform lives. Mayor Michael Tubbs is the architect. Is Stockton a good representation of what American cities look like right now? I think absolutely Stockton's a good representation in terms of the promise, but also some of the peril. How would you know? You're the mayor of Stockton, dude. Why even ask the mayor of Stockton that question? That is <laughs> That's like true. bad reporting. What, what was he going to say? <laughs> nah. Nah, absolutely not. Completely different. 23% of our population lives in poverty. Now, for 125 families, a monumental change in fortune. In February, Stockton kick-started Seed, funded with private money. The city sends $500 a month on debit cards, no strings attached to random recipients. Chosen from neighborhoods where the median income is roughly 46,000 a year. Here are the grapes. They're betting people like Laura Plummer will spend wisely. Now, nearly a year into it, she says the program's already bearing fruit. What does an extra $500 a month mean to you? Woo, it, it means a lot because seriously, before C came along, I was paying a lot of bills and didn't know how I was going to eat. Early results reveal almost 40% of seed money goes to the dinner table, about a quarter to purchases at big box stores, and the rest mainly on utilities, auto care, and medical expenses. Critics counter the money could be misused or dampen efforts to get a job. But in Stockton, seed director Suki Samra sees upside. Seed director. See, <laughs> the director of the program sees the upside. Ah, oh, gee, I wonder if she has a conflict of interest. I wonder yeah. if she has an unbiased opinion. If we're able to give people an income floor of $500 a month, that they're able to take more risks, that they're able to get new jobs if they want to. Samra says some have already found full-time Wait, work. wait. Yes. They're supposed to make career shifts with 500 bucks? Yeah, you gotta be able that to take more risks. Really? Take risks. Oh, you can wow. move out of Stockton. Wait, then you can't get the 500 bucks anymore. Yeah. <laughs> can't uh, take that many risks. <gasps> Others. It's like being able to breathe. A renewed so sense of dignity worried. and empowerment. They're hoping this brief boost takes root elsewhere. No idea where this money's actually coming from. Yeah. It says it's coming from the Economic Security Project, a nonprofit that sponsors other guaranteed income experiments. Okay. What does that mean? Mm. Oh, where does it, what does that yeah, mean? About 43% of seed recipients are currently working full time or part time. According to the researchers, 11% are taking care of parents or children, 20% reported disabled, 8% had retired, 5% were students, and only 2% said they were actively looking for work. Yeah, where does the money come from? Yeah. 100 bucks a month? It's, it's, it's an interesting it, idea. Yeah. Very interesting. That's what I was going to say, but I don't really get either how the research is going to be done. Like, what are they comparing it to? Yeah. People, people not yeah, yeah that's how the research the, is doing that's that's what they're doing 
But but where's the baseline then? Where are all those people that they're studying that aren't giving incomes? Because shouldn't you have to track some sort of progress or what these people were able to do? It says a smaller group was randomly chosen to receive money from the eligible pool who responded and a control group, which isn't receiving money, agreed to share financial information oh, okay. about themselves too. That's how you do the study. Perfect. Yeah. So, but it still doesn't really, because yeah. people are just more financially responsible and pe- it doesn't really tell you anything. I'm curious where the hell the money's coming from. How yeah. do you pay for that? Where? And I'm totally for it. If we can get rid of all these other social programs that waste all this money and government resources, I'm totally for UBI. Yeah. So let's then, bring it on. We gotta get rid of all the waste yeah. in between. Just give them the money. So Cut the waste. We're talking about not having food stamps. Yep. What all else? All that stuff yeah. goes bye bye for a UBI. Yeah. Let everyone else make their decisions. If you want to roll that way, you can't have both. How, how do you have both? That doesn't make any sense. No, I I agree with that. But. <sighs> Maybe this is how they'll pay for it. Ars Technica to replace gas taxes. Oregon and Utah ask EVs to pay for road use. Nothing new. This is just upsetting because Oregon is highly disappointed when it comes to registration and road use fees and all this crap. And it just keeps going up. They keep going up and up. That's yeah. all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> so much for those electric cars too, yeah. trying to save you money. Well, the electric, yeah, well, it's always a way to get you, get more money out of you. It always starts off, oh, yeah, you'll be able to use the carpool lane and blah, blah, blah. And then they start pulling the back, pulling yeah. it back, pulling it. Oh, crap. It sucks. Yeah. Uh, so, it's going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> so what was the moral of this story? Screw electric, go back to gas guzzlers? Cause... Yeah, possibly. <laughs> That's Because they're trying to tax EVs now because, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, gas taxes pay for the upkeep of our roads, but electric cars don't use gas. <laughs> well, then you got to tax them and you got to track them. You got to put oh, these little yeah. trackers in them, track them. Well, oh, was, I'm sure Oregon's on track for that. Yeah, and that was something that was kind of just slipped in this article of, oh, yeah, or you could get a tracker and it'll bill you per mile. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds real convenient. Thanks yeah. a lot. No, thanks. One America News Network, Bill Gates calls for higher taxes on the rich. Bill Gates says those like him, the rich, should pay more. The Microsoft co-founder made those remarks in a recent blog post, claiming the wage gap is growing and America doesn't have enough money to meet its obligation. Gates has previously expressed his support of higher taxes for those well-off, but not through a wealth tax. If I'd had to pay $20 billion, it's fine. Uh, but, you know, when you say I should pay $100 billion, okay, then I'm starting to do a little math about uh, what I have left over. Sorry. Gates says, you better do a little Whoa. bit than a little bit. Better, better yeah. do more than just a little bit of math there, buddy. <laughs> Good old Bill Gates. His position on taxes is somewhere between the GOP-backed tax cuts and the proposed wealth tax by presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren. He stopped short of saying he'd meet with the Democrat candidate. You know, I'm not sure how open-minded she is. uh, uh, Or that she'd even be willing to sit down with somebody, you know, who has uh, large amounts of money. (laughs) Good old Bill Gates. Don't they always want to talk to people with large amounts of money? Yeah, there's a blog post. I don't know where it's at, actually. So we're actually not going to show it. But, and fixing taxation at the federal level is not... Was well, only part of the solution. We also need to make state and local taxes fair since they represent a large portion of Americans' tax bill. For example, I still think we should adopt state income tax in Washington. Apparently, Bill Gates has been pushing for this. Screw you, Bill Gates. This is one of the good states to live in. Washington State, no state income tax. Great. Yeah. Great. And does he have an income currently? No, he doesn't. And he lives in Washington. So guess what? He said, no, hey, guess what? No income. I, no, I Income tax for everybody except for me because I don't have an income anymore. Bill, oh, yeah. He it's does mention point. the estate tax in his essay, but... Yeah. The wealth tax is interesting. That's always the one that's intriguing. I Yeah. Always, this sounds like the way to go, but... How do you quantify all that, though, too? All those assets. <laughs> Everyone, all those rich people have assets. Yeah. Tax those assets. Tax the crap. Tax the, Tax it all. Tax the boats. Tax the planes. Tax the tax. houses. Tax it all. Tax their big stuff. <laughs> An idea. Yep. 60 Minutes. Jeffrey Epstein's autopsy. A closer look. Topsy reveals that Jeffrey Epstein had petechiae, which is burst vessels. Dr. Baden says that's a key indicator that somebody's neck was compressed and that you see it more in a compression than you do see it in a hanging. Hmm. We know from the... Very interesting. This is a very controversial topic, Jeffrey Epstein. Autopsy that Jeffrey Epstein had a n- number of other injuries. There was an injury to the back of his neck and had an injection mark very clearly um, in his arm. 
We don't know what that's from. We don't know if that happened at the hospital or if it's something else. We just don't know because we've not been able to get the... That's really weird. Yeah. You just don't know and that's just, we're going to accept that? Okay. The medical records from inside the MCC. There were three fractures of the neck bones. Dr. Bodden's key reasons for being suspicious about the death of Jeffrey Epstein is the broken hyoid bone and thyroid cartilage. Tell me about what we're seeing right here. What are, what are we looking at? Here, here is the jawbone, the, uh, the uh, jawbone of the uh, uh, mandible, the lower bone in the uh, head. And underneath that, at the bottom, are the clavicles on, uh, and the uh, breast bone where the muscles insert. Mm -hmm. The red are all muscles. Mm -hmm. The hyoid bone is a small bone uh, here just above the Adam's apple, which is the thyroid cartilage. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, Jeffrey Epstein's autopsy, there were fractures of the left, the right hi uh, thyroid cartilage, and the left hyoid bone. Mm -hmm all requiring different kinds of pressure and positioning mm. of the noose of the ligature one of the very interesting yeah so this guy just hanged himself <laughs> jeffrey F D epstein didn't kill himself I, question mark ooh, i don't know <laughs> still more to this clip pathologist we spoke to absolutely agreed with dr biden and says yes that's very suspicious to have all oh, three shit. of those uh, bones broken the cartilage broken Another pathologist we spoke to wasn't as convinced and said it doesn't necessarily indicate homicide. The doctor who performed the autopsy, while Dr. Michael Bodden observed, um, came to the determination that it was inconclusive and they needed more evidence, um, more information. And then a couple days later, they changed that and, and determined that the cause of death was suicide by hanging. One of the things mm. we have heard is that the guard that found Jeffrey Epstein cut him down, which you'd seem to indicate somebody cutting down a noose or something. If you look at the noose that the medical examiner examined, and you look very closely at the edges, it appears perfectly hemmed. It doesn't look like anybody ever took scissors to it. So there is- Oh, whoa, what? Nobody cut it down? How do you cut it down mm. if there's, if it's not? Yeah, what's the story? Ooh, wee. ooh. Maybe it was planted there after the fact. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Some question. Is that the right noose? Probably not. Or, what, or, it, or they're it's lying about hand. the story. Yeah. <laughs> or they, yeah, either someone's lying or it's not the right noose. One or the other. A or B. The difficulties with this story is because they charge two guards, there is a firewall and you cannot get information because you go to the Department of Justice, you go to the FBI and say, hey, what's going on here? And they said, there's an ongoing criminal investigation. We can't tell you anything. That's made it especially difficult. We've had to rely to people on the ground and sources placed throughout the story. We have examined many photos, looked at the evidence and talked to so many people, but we still have many questions and we're looking forward to getting more answers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's that, a. That was really weird about the cause of death, too. Yeah. Why wouldn't they have just left it as undetermined? That whole s situation is very suspect. Yeah. And we're never going to find out anything because <laughs> two people were charged and now there's a bunch of pending investigations and now everyone's hush hush about it. All right. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> Democracy now. Global manipulation out of control. The Guardian newspaper reports a new massive leak by data firm Cambridge Analytica is set to expose tens of thousands of documents detailing the work of a global operation involving at least 68 countries used to manipulate voters on an industrial scale. A global operation <laughs> used <laughs> to manipulate voters on an industrial scale in 60 countries or some crap? But, oh, man, that was a lot. Oh, yeah. One more time. I'm sorry, a lot of words. Analytica is set to expose tens of thousands of documents detailing the work of a global operation involving at least 68 countries used to manipulate voters on an industrial scale. The document— Oh, voter manipulation in 68 countries. Okay, cool. Ooh, nothing wrong with that. 
Evidence will be released over the next months. Cambridge Analytica collapsed in May 2018 after The Observer newspaper revealed the company had harvested some 87 million Facebook profiles without the user's knowledge or consent. Cambridge Analytica then used the data to sway voters to support President Trump during the 2016 campaign. The most recent leak began on New Year's Day through an anonymous Twitter account with links to documents on elections in Brazil, Malaysia, Asia and Kenya. Brazil, Malaysia, and Kenya. We'll have to see what else comes out about this. This is pretty yeah. new stuff. You the know, Donald Trump stuff was old, and actually, all the parties were everyone was tapping into that information. Oh, yeah. So it's not just the Republicans or Donald Trump, it was everybody. That was just an open axe. That was just an open pipe. That was the scandal is that all of your information is just open for everyone to look at. It's all cool. Don't worry about it. Nothing <laughs> private here. Don't see anything. Facebook. But this is why your data is valuable. This yep. is why we're always it's <laughs> harping on privacy on Healthy Talk Show, because this is what happens. Mass global manipulation. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Yeah, and people don't realize it. And of course, you, you can't. You're, you can't see that. You don't know the data like they we, have all the yeah, data. Yeah, we can't see it. Nobody can yeah. see it. It's just when it happens, it gets exposed. And oh, yeah, oh, shit, this is happening. Yeah. Let's not pay attention to it anymore. So remember, you are valuable. Yes. They got all that Facebook data. Facebook. Facebook makes money. Lots of money. Zuckerberg has a huge house. Yeah. I'm reliably informed he makes a lot of money. And Facebook is free. Yep. How Think does that about work? that. Ooh. If you want security advice, ask at healthytalkshow.com. Robert will help you out. <laughs> Whoa. I'm don't serious. Know, don't know about that. <laughs> healthytalkshow.com slash support and then ask at healthytalkshow.com <laughs> give me some money and then i'll help you out fair enough <laughs> i'm you know i need money i'm not like california i don't have all this money laying around oh, how is california getting money well they have a new water law that's getting pretty controversial kind of hard to find a good video about it because ktla took it down let's check it out all right, this one, I'm not sure how I feel about this. You're not going to be allowed to shower and do a load of laundry in the same day. I, I, I had the, the same misgivings. Um, doing a load of laundry takes about 40 to, to 50 gallons of water. Uh, taking a shower for about eight minutes takes about 17 gallons of water. Well, there's a limitation on your daily use of water of 55 gallons per day. So that means if you are taking a shower and you're doing a load of laundry, you can't do both without being in violation of the law. Um, there are some exceptions about this. There are some caveats. Uh, for instance, if you have a multi-person household, if you have four people in your household or three people in your household, that 55 gallon limit per day applies in, uh, for each person. So it I hope you people in California don't use a lot of water. Yeah. I'm just really hoping that you uh, really come back in your water usage down there. Yeah. It, you could do a load of laundry um, if you have a multi-person uh, household. And <laughs> okay, so who's going to police gonna, that? Yeah, yeah. cuff Mark Krisky when yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> laundry. What's going on? Here. Who's enforcing this? Well, yeah. you, you can actually see your your water uses on a daily rate uh, with your water meter. Uh, now there are actually fines available for this as well. Your mm. your first your, your violation is one thousand dollars per each day I, that you are in violation. Wait, who who made this a law? Uh, <laughs> that who made this law. We'll revisit that, but news lady, come on. You asked that question, you're supposed to be telling me who made the law yeah. and you're reporting on it. You're the one sitting at the desk. <laughs> That's true. If you don't know, why should, why, yeah, why, why should I know? Why am I going to get Yeah, what the, why should I listen to you? What the hell? <laughs> you you should have been prepared for this segment. You should have come at it. Oh, yeah, and who made this law? Yeah, because you're doing the show. <laughs> yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Talk to them. <laughs> it's a state legislature. Yeah, you should talk the to them. Call them up. Effect goes into effect January 1st. Now, there's also another caveat. If we're in drought conditions and the governor declares an emergency, Here we go. that fine can go up to $10,000 a day. So be careful. $10,000 a day if you're in a drought. $10,000 a day. Woo. Yeah. You, you could change your word to serenity to anger now. Wow. And you're not going to be able to shower in 2020. Well, you know what? I'm going to pick doing laundry over showering. So, so all of a sudden, I can smoke marijuana as much as I want, but I can't take a shower. Yeah, it's, it's Unbelievable. a whole Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That's yes. where our country uh, time for one state more. is going. Yeah, your state. Yeah, okay, you guys live there. Uh -huh. California Globe, just the facts about California's new household, household water rationing law. This blog post kind of, it actually brings up that KTLA. The KTLA took that video down. I don't know why. This blog post kind of criticized it, saying, oh, they're not factually correct, but they actually are, except for the fact where they make it sound like it's going to be a direct fine to the consumer. Yeah. Which that's it's going to be to the water supplier or whatever, but still, that's okay. That you're going to get that fine if it's ten thousand dollars a day. I guarantee you, they're not going to cover your butt on ten thousand dollars a day. 
other than that, I don't know what her issue was really yeah. with the KTLA. I, I don't know why KTLA took it down because AB 1668 Assembly Bill at 1668. Yeah, I believe that it's, that was it. You can yeah. clearly see that. It's right here. This bill would require the state res water resources control board in coordination with the Department of Water Resources to adopt long-term standards for the efficient use of water as provided in the performance measures, commercial, industrial, institutional use, and or before July 30th, 2022. The bill would require the department in coordination with the board to conduct necessary studies and investigations and make recommendations no later than October 1st, 2021 for purposes, blah, blah, blah. The bill would require the department in coordination with the board to conduct necessary studies, blah, blah, blah. The bill... Where does it say that? Right here. Would establish 55 gallons per capita daily use until January 1st, 2025. Would establish 55 da daily use, 55 gallon daily use beginning. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. That's what it says. Yep. It says right there in the, in the intro. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find it here. Da, 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 da. Trying to read from a sale is not the best, but all you video people can see that. Yeah. There it's right go. there. On it's right there. The it's in the intro. 55 gallon yeah. limit. Yeah. It's right there. <laughs> the, the only. Thing that the KTLA was a little inaccurate about was again the pri the fine being put right. on the consumer, but it probably would be. Why is this framework? Why do they need this? Why? Yeah. If this is not a, nothing to worry about, don't worry about it. It's just we're, we're we're you could trust us. And then that oh that article the California Globe one brings up. There's no way to smart. Isn't it say that there's no way to meter? Oh, something. It Some, does say something like that. But that's but, what smart meters are for, dude. Yeah. You ever heard of a smart meter? They're installing them everywhere. They can track everything you do. They can even shut you down. Well, what's funny is that legislature, too, it mentions ways of how they're going to quantify this usage. Because, of course, now that they have this law and these mm -hmm. limits set in place, well, how are they going to measure it? So just like Robert mentioned, there's going to be smart meters. They're mm -hmm. going to have to track People, they're going to have to create whole things. New studies, and study. yeah, more money. Study. Let's spend taxpayer dollars to save water, everybody. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. We need to do it. Yeah. No, you don't, California. You are so screwed. You were just spending money. Like, you got it. it. You don't have it. You're broke. And so let's talk about, too, that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water a day. That's bad for this. Yeah, let that <laughs> sink in. So you're basically the water supplier the retail water supplier mm -hmm. that's the word they use in the bill they're basically gonna be paying this fine yep and then you're gonna be of course it'll probably it's scaled back it'll be different but it you're why are you allowing these people and the reporter asking who did this well i'll show you bob hertzberger at senate hertzberger on twitter he has some sex doesn't he have some allegations of sexual oh, misconduct yeah. against him he's still in office and he's behind this bill thank you very much laura friedman at laura friedman 43 ben allen at ben allen ca scott wiener at scott underscore wiener these are all people these are elected officials you all elected them hello you all elected them they all live in effluent areas they're all jewish something's going on here i don't know you tell me california i don't know you yeah. tell me so now you can call them and tweet them because now you know who they are. Yes. <laughs> so you, again, I love uh, the diversity here. Healthy dot com slash support because we give for you this Jewish information. <laughs> it's really <laughs> the diversity here. This is California. And the, come on, th this is the representation you have in California, guys. That is, this is California. I thought California is the melting pot of everything. Bullshit. I'm so upset about this. Yeah, I thought everyone was an atheist in California. Yeah, that's that's what's what's saying, yes, saying. that's what's really interesting. Everyone's atheist in California, but apparently not the the politicians. Okay. By the uh, way, this bill is 55 pages. I believe we have a link to it in our show notes. We will help check it out, guys. Talkshow.com forward slash 47. Read the bull for yourself. Yes, and healthytalkshow.com slash support. Uh, talking about people we need to get out of office immediately <laughs> and politicians oh, no. that are just dumb. A recurring theme here. Maxine Waters <laughs> got a prank call by a Russian podcast and they pretended to be Greta Thunberg, the environmental activist. So this is just hilarious. Let's check it out. It's called Von Von 222 Prank Prank with Maxine Waters. Stars save the earth, number one. Congresswoman? Yeah. I have Greta and her father, Savante, on the line. Thank you very much. Congresswoman, this is Swante, Greta's father. And yes, here's Greta. Yes. Hello, Congresswoman Waters. Hello, I'm very happy to talk to you. That sounds nothing like Greta. Yeah. I have heard Greta speak. That sounds nothing like her. That sounds like, like a Swedish girl. <laughs> well, thank you both for calling me, and I'm very anxious to hear from you. Yes, I know that Jos called you Aunt Maxine. 
That's so oh, sweet, yeah, I yes, think. Auntie. Is that true? <laughs> Auntie Maxine. Oh, my. Buttering her up. Love it. She's falling for yeah, it. Yeah, she is. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's so nice. We have wonderful climate strike to support the, the <laughs> ecology of uh, Chunga Changa Island. What? A thousand of people came to meet yeah, me. Yeah, Chunga Changa. Chango Changa Island. That's what she said. Huh? Changa Changa. Chunga Changa. And Find that on a map. Against the pollution uh, and to save our planet. I'm very glad that my cause finds so much support. I was in California last week. It was so great. Well, thank you, and I'm so glad you came to my state, and of course, I know all about you. You have made quite a big, big, big thunder uh, on this issue. I am really, really very proud. I really like what she says, because she doesn't say anything. Let's listen one more time. Typical politician. She's not actually, and remember, this is the politician. She has power. She has power. Let's listen to what she doesn't actually say anything. It was so great. Well, thank you, and I'm so glad you came to my state, and of course, I know all about you. You have made quite a big, big, big thunder. Big thunder. Uh, big thunder. Issue. Doing what? What issue? I'm really, really <laughs> very say the issue. Yeah. Uh, That's pretty you good. you and the work that you're doing. Uh, we're now in the North Carolina. Uh, so we are in a climate strike here in a meeting. Okay. So you're in the meeting now. You start the meeting has started. Yes, yes, already. <laughs> yes, yes. We we we're there now. We're here now at the meeting. And if you will allow me, I will put you on a speakerphone. So yes. Yeah. And we will let you say to people who is around here. I think that it will be great honors for them to hear you. So you can say some words of support to all the people who who came here to support the problems of the. A uh, wonderful island and the ecology of the world. <laughs> you couldn't even remember the Which name. Which island are they targeting? Chunga Changa. Chunga Changa? Yes. Okay. In, All right, so now she's going to get ready because she's thinking <laughs> she's going to be speaking on, on speakerphone to a bunch of people about this island. That island is particularly threatened? Okay get involved. So let me get started, okay? Yes, we are Hello, ready. Everybody. You can start. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Congresswoman Maxine Waters, and I am so pleased uh, to be on this telephone call with Greta Thudberg. <laughs> Thudberg. <laughs> I am just so proud of her and her father, Savante Thudberg, and the work that they are doing. <laughs> As you know, Greta uh, is an environmental activist, and she took part in the United Nations Climate Summit in New York recently, and she has been traveling, and she has been the greatest advocate for what is happening with our climate and the environment, and I'm very pleased that she's with you in North Carolina, where you're focusing on protecting the very important island of Chula Chan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, she didn't even get the fake she island right. She didn't get right. the fake island name right or Thornburg right. Or, she didn't get anything right. You think it's done? No. Oh, they keep no. going. Yeah, I cut a lot of this out. Let's continue on with this prank. Maxine Waters does not catch on for a while. Yes, yes, that what uh, he added that. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I will tell you the truth. Anyway, I really wanted to push the Ukraine president to put my uh, competitor on trail. And he will go to trail with you, with your bunch of ecology and Democrats. I already have a separate cage for all of you. I was crying. Oh, my God. Did you cry? Yes, I was crying, and even I cry now because it's very hard to remember this. He said that he said her, uh, "You know, little girl, uh, nobody believe you anyway." <laughs> I really, in, I'll tell you the truth. I really pushed on Ukrainian president. Oh my god! And you know that uh, <laughs> you will never achieve your goals like this. Congressional fools who accuse me, and you know what? 
So nobody will believe you. You will be in trial like in you, my competitor. Yes, he added. Oh the my God. He me. mentioned the Ukrainian president. Look at her. She's all, she's all excited. What? Oh he mentioned the Ukrainian God. president? Whoa, hold on. Let me get, let me get my tape recorder. Yeah. I got to listen to what you're saying real close now. What's go? What the? Why is she believing this? Yes, he said that. And he, he added, nobody will believe you anyway. Nobody will believe you anyway. And what else did he yeah. say? That's all. <laughs> And it he, was enough for me. <laughs> yes, it, it was terrible. Okay. Did you he try? said like uh, that I'm silly little girl. He he laughed at me and uh, ran away after that. But you know, we uh, read Greta always has a tape recorder in her pocket to record uh, her performances. And those words of uh, Mr. Trump got on the record. So we have audio evidence of that. Are you going to be in Washington anytime soon? I want you to come and meet with me in Washington. I think this okay. is where she ends it. Okay. I think that's it where would, she catches it on. It would help to uh, finish what you, ha what you have started. I mean, impeachment process. I, I think if it's possible, Greta could, be, could uh, make a speech in a Congress if you, if you will need it. Oh, yes. I am absolutely still working. We are working very hard. We're putting together the facts. And we're going after him. We're going to try everything that we have to impeach him. Okay. Yes. And if the public knew yep. that he talked to Greta like that, he made her cry. That's an, making Greta cry is an impeachable offense. Now I hope you is. knew that. Yeah. I hope everyone knew that. <laughs> and told her she would never achieve. This will go against him, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, she's not, she hasn't been serving too long or anything, has she? No, uh, she's only been serving since 1991. Oh, wow. Yeah, her 15th term in the house. Wow. In <laughs> California. Yep. California, you really got to do something about your politicians. Let's gotta, think about that. Got to start paying attention and vote <laughs> them out. You really need to pay attention. You, you got to get KTLA to be on your politicians yeah. a little bit more because apparently they don't know what's going on. These water things pass. They criticize them. The state tells them to take down the video because the video, we can't find the video. Yeah. Kind of weird. You know what videos you can find? You can find videos of Healthy Talk Show because <laughs> we're free and open source. Yeah. And at Healthy Talk Show, we actually, you know, do our work and try to research a little bit. Try. We try to find who wrote the bill. We we read the bill or we at least... read the damn bill. <laughs> yeah. I, I will admit, I did not read every word of that page. But hey, we need your support so we can keep doing what we do. S support your independent media, healthytalkshow.com slash support. We appreciate it so much. Please send the love. We definitely need your love. There's no bullshit on this podcast. No bullshit. We need your financial contribution. Our show is value is value user supported. For, yeah, value for value. Yes. Hopefully you found value in all our information. And yep. now you guys can go and contact your Congress people. Yep. So healthytalkshow.com slash support. Yep. Another way for to provide value is the feedback. Ask at HealthyTalkShow.com. HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash Discord for our Discord. Don't know what it is. We don't either. Show us. We record Healthy Talk Show live on Mondays and now Fridays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 3 a.m. UTC over at HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash live. Love and light. Love and light.